Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. We are continuing our journey through line five. Um, we are reaching the area of psychological or psychiatric injury. And this is something we are actually allowed to say does exist on uh, the abortion lobby. While they insist that the vast majority of women feel nothing but overwhelming relief and gratitude and they dance out of the abortion clinic ready to take on life and just, yes, live your best life. Wow. Um, they admit that some women do, you know, not exactly thrive after their abortions. Um, they also assert that it's the woman's own fault. She should have known she wouldn't cope well. Um, so I'm going to look at the cases we had in line five. Now, the first uh, case we noted um, was eventually called Sandra on the Blackman Wall. She was 18 years old when she underwent a first trimester abortion procedure in New York. Three days later, on April 18, 1971, she killed herself. Uh, before her death, she had expressed guilt about having killed her baby. Tragically, nobody had contacted Sandra to give her the results of the pathology report on what had been removed of her, uh, from her uterus. There had been no embryo. Sandra had not actually been pregnant. Uh, the next case we get, I did find the newspaper article about it, and I, I linked to that in the companion post. Linda was 35 years old and three and a half months pregnant when she underwent her abortion at Hope Medical Group. It was performed by Dr. James de Gerse. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, she said she was not clearly informed about the development of her unborn baby or of the possibility that she could later expel recognizable fetal parts. The evening after the abortion, Linda expelled the upper part of her fetus into her undergarments. She said, I saw a baby that was fully formed. She reported severe emotional trauma and recurring nightmares, including a child missing parts of its body. She said she was haunted by images of what she'd seen. If I live to be a, live to be a hundred years old, I don't think I will ever forget. Now the defense argued that Linda had undergone a previous abortion and she had been given informed consent. The document Linda signed noted that incomplete abortion was a possible complication. And, um, in the companion post, I do link to the YouTube video I did about how realistic is it to say you may retain tissue, the abortion may be incomplete. Um, how thorough is the informed consent in informing a woman that there may be recognizable body parts, you know, arms, legs, head, face, um, that she might expel? Those of you who've undergone abortions in your informed consent, Especially, you know, if you had an incomplete abortion before they discharged you, did they prepare you? Now, when you go home, you might be shocked by what you see, or did they just vaguely talk about tissue? Um, Arlen Dela Cruz was still in high school when she learned she was pregnant in the fall of 1992. And a friend recalled that Arlen wanted to have her baby, but agreed to an abortion to try to salvage her relationship with her boyfriend. In October, she went missing from her home and her body was later found hanging in the woods nearby and under her shirt was her favorite stuffed animal. She had left a suicide note saying she wanted to be with her baby. Now, Line 5 only cites a Christian Broadcasting Network um, episode that was aired, but I did live in Harrisburg at the time and the case was covered on both print and broadcast media. So if anybody can get hold of that and provide me with that, I'd appreciate it very much. Or I might actually go to the library and look for it next time I'm visiting friends in Harrisburg. Melinda was 25 when she underwent an abortion in New York City. A week later, the facility got a pathology report noting that there was no fetus in the tissue they would submitted to the lab. Despite the danger of an incomplete abortion or an ectopic pregnancy, the facility did not notify Melinda. Prior to her scheduled follow-up appointment, she suffered severe cramps and went to an emergency room. There, she delivered a four and a half inch fetus into the toilet. Melinda screamed until she was taken to an exam room to undergo a procedure to remove the placenta. Afterward, she needed psychiatric care for post-traumatic depression, insomnia, and nightmares and became reluctant to enter into relationships with men. Stephanie was 13 weeks pregnant and 42 years old when she underwent her abortion. 
The doctor's notes accurately reflected that Stephanie did not want the abortion but was submitting because it was what her husband wanted. She suffered profuse vaginal bleeding after the abortion, was bedridden for two months with a vaginal infection, and suffered depression and despondency resulting in psychiatric hospitalization. So, again, according to the abortion lobby, this is so rare as to be negligible, not worth worrying your pretty little head about. You're going you're gonna to feel nothing but joy and euphoria after your abortion unless you're already a total nutcase to begin with, in which case, yeah, you might irrationally experience negative emotions. I have to, so that YouTube will, see YouTube, I'm saying, no worries, no worries, no. The abortion's gonna go just so smoothly, nothing bad could possibly happen. 